Okay, for the time being, I just stuck my brake caliper here. I just stuck it right back on that pin because there isn't room to tie it off because it still has these clamps holding it on. However, the next thing we're going to work on is there's two bolts on this bracket that go into the steering knuckle right in here and one there. Let's just hope they come out, you know, without having a monkey around torching them up, getting them hot, but let's see what happens. It appears to be a fairly small size bolt head on it, like a 10 millimeter or so. 10 millimeter pound on. All right. Let's see if that sucker will come without breaking it off. That's all we need, right? All right. Oh yeah, nice and easy. Gotta be lucky once in a while. Okay, that's the, that's one 50% of them. Bottom side. Oh, that also came easy. Easier than I expected. Both of them were easier than I expected. So, you gotta get lucky once in a while, right sports fans? I can't believe how nicely these came out. Bear in mind, we're not to the tricky part of this job yet. That's, that's yet to come, okay? All this stuff is child's play. Um, if this intimidates you, you're either going to have to get a buddy to help you or uh, take it to a service shop because... It gets tougher than this. This is the easy part. All right, you see that nut right there? That's what we're going after. Let's take out the cotter pin, and then we'll spray it up with some, some lube. Boy, there ain't much left of that cotter pin. It just pretty much just rusted away. Now things might be a little trickier here this time because there might not be clearance to get my impact wrench on there. We will find out. Spray her up with a little lube. Looks like 18 millimeter pound on. Yeah. 18 millimeter pound on. Now, is there going to be room to put the impact wrench on that? Not a chance. All right. We determined that's 18 millimeter pound on for a size. And now it's tool abuse time. Tool abuse time. I don't have an impact socket, so I'm going to use a regular, I don't have an impact universal rather. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use a regular chrome standard hand tool type universal on a chrome socket using an air wrench. So that, that's going to be great, huh? That didn't work very good. All right, that didn't work very good. Went flying off. Found my universal joint, but I did not find my socket. But you know what? Turns out it's 17 millimeter pound on rather than 18 millimeter. Let's try this again. What did I learn from that experience? Absolutely nothing. Here we go again. Boy, that was lucky. I got her off. But I'm telling you one thing. That probably was as close to a fail as you could get without actually being a fail. Are we still in frame? Yes, we are. So we're going to whack right there, see what happens. You know what? Let me just see if my puller will work on this because I don't want to ruin the boot on that. The boot kind of hangs down over the over the knuckle. So I'm gonna 
put this nut back on upside down like so okay got that on a little bit now I'm gonna see if I can make that come out in my tie rod puller and I might not be able to Not the best situation, sports fans, because this is not on here squarely. So there's a good chance this will just pop off. But it worked. So we've been incredibly lucky. Other than losing my 18 millimeter socket when I was doing something that was actually rather stupid, um, things have worked very nicely. So now we'll take this nut off and hopefully the steering knuckle won't just go flying at me when I do it. There we go. Best place. I don't have enough hands right now. I'm gonna just kind of put that up there like that. You know what I'm gonna do? Just hang on a second. I think I'm gonna just get something for that to set on. Let me just get a bucket to set that caliper on. There. That could just sit right there on the, that block of wood there. Okay. Now, the next thing I gotta do, let me get things in frame. And as you can see, that I put a block of wood there to set my brake caliper on. And let's see here. There we go. There we go. Oh, by the way, lucky for me, um, the, once I took off that top, uh, let's see if I can get this in frame here. Once I took off that top nut for the top ball joint, this, uh, steering knuckle came off very, very easily. I was quite lucky that, uh, that the bearing wasn't, uh, rusted to that uh, spindle. Someone did grease it when they assembled it, which is a good deal. Um, made it a lot easier to take apart. Now that we got this apart, like I said, we looked at our tie rod end. Boy, that looks pretty darn good. Um, our ball joint feels good there. Um, our lower ball joint feels really good, so I'm not going to mess with them. Now we're getting to the hard part, sports fans. All right, the next thing we have to do, and we could have done this while it was still in the car, I was just getting excited about getting that steering knuckle off. We have to take off this rotor. Now, to, in order to do so, we have to take off these bolts here, okay? Our, they're little countersunk uh, bolts, machine screws, whatever you want to call them. But first, we had to re remove the uh, brake caliper bracket. Now, actually, you could have saved maybe some time by removing that without removing the brake caliper itself. You could have removed the bracket and caliper together, but I wanted to take a look at my brake pads anyway. And it's no big deal, because it's there's only, well in this case, one bolt that held on that brake caliper, so it's no big deal at all. So I'm gonna take off these two bolts here, and uh, looks like they're 17 or 18 millimeters. Um, We'll find out. I'll put this in the vise. I'll take that off. Then we'll take out those countersunk machine screws that hold on the rotor. Oh yeah, in case you're interested what size those uh, bolt heads are that hold on the uh, caliper bracket, uh, they're 17 millimeter pound on. Now let's, okay, we got the uh, caliper bracket off. Now let's see what, how much of a fight those caliper screws are going to put up. Okay, now let's try and kick these rotor screws out. They actually don't look too bad, but I'm telling you, if they give me any amount of trouble at all, I'm just going to drill them out. <laughs> you don't need them. Uh, the rotor's not going to go anywhere 
when the wheel is on the car with the lug nuts. So I just, I don't let those things give me too hard a time. We will try a regular screwdriver. If that doesn't work, we'll try the impact screwdriver. And if the impact screwdriver doesn't get them out, we strip these threads. They're getting drilled out. All right, try number one with the regular screwdriver. Oh, <laughs> too freaking easy. That just came out as easy as it was just put on yesterday. Let's see, let's see how the other one is. I can't, I can't believe the other one's going to be this easy. That's a little bit more normal. Yeah, that one don't want to come. All right, impact screwdriver. And every home mechanic's favorite solution, a big hammer. Too easy, sports fans. Too easy. It makes you wonder. This kind of stuff doesn't scare. But, you know, what the heck bad thing is going to happen to me if... Uh, if things where you're expecting problems are, are that easy. I mean, that, that's nuts. That is nuts how easy that was. I never dreamed that these screws would come out this easily. Now with that, this rotor should come off. And if it doesn't come right off, we all know what we got to do. The big hammer. Okay, so let's just whack the hell out of this thing. There we go. You can tell by the change in the tone of the ring when you hit whack it once it comes loose. But there's my rotor, and it's actually in fairly nice shape. We got this done before the... Uh, before the brake pads uh, were worn all the way down and ruined it. Uh, we do have a certain amount of, this should probably should be clean all the way to the end, and uh, it's not. I'll just clean that up as good as I can. I'll just put on my new pads and see what happens. But that probably shouldn't, the brake pads probably kind of wore down and eroded away so the very end of them wasn't doing that. That's where the crud and stuff can get in them. And, uh, so they wore away and weren't making contact by the rest of the brake pads were. But I'm not going to let that bother me. I'm just going to put her back together. Here's another thing for all you sports fans out there. On these Honda Civics, this dust shield, quite often, if you live in the rust belt, will be totally rusted out. Where these screws go on to hold it, they'll be rusted out. And uh, I've had these things dangling. If you hear a jing jingle jangle on your car, Honda, right down in the wheel area while you're driving. Um, chances are it rusted out where these screws at least are that hold this on and uh, that's just dangling. I, I, my car was doing that, I, I just left it, let it go. And eventually it rusted out so much that it just fell off the car. But you might say, oh my God, you gotta replace that. Well, go watch some four wheel type, uh, four wheeling type uh, builds. Videos on guys that do off-roading. Uh, quite often, they remove these dust shields for their off-road trucks or their rock crawling trucks. Now, if an off-road four-wheeler doesn't need this dust shield, I, I'm pretty confident my car doesn't. So if this was in bad shape, I wouldn't even replace it, but it is in remarkably good shape. Wouldn't be all surprised if that was replaced once in the lifetime of this car because it's, it's just in too good a shape to be original equipment. This is where it gets tricky. I'm usually a pretty big fan of the way Hondas design their cars. They're pretty easy to work on in general. Here's kind of where they fell down. Most cars wheel bearings, let me just dig in my trash from a wheel bearing job I did in the past. The ghost of wheel bearing jobs past. Here we go. Now most normal cars, the wheel bearings look like this. It has got a pillow block there with three bolts. You take off them bolts, your wheel bearings off. Really easy. So easy, in fact, that when wheel bearings go out on most cars, front wheel bearings, you don't even have to feel bad about it. It's not that big a deal. Okay, they aren't that expensive and very easy to replace. We got something totally different going on here with the Honda. A Honda 
it's got a pressed in wheel bearing. Okay, it's got to be pressed in and pressed out if you're going to do the job correctly. Um, and to make things even trickier, that bearing is, this hub is pressed into this bearing, but also the bearing is pressed into this steering knuckle. So there's two things that you have to press, and you have to be careful that you don't screw it up. Now there's plenty of videos out there that show you how to do it without a press. In fact, this is going to be one of them. But uh, the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to remove this metal shield here. All right, this metal shield is easy enough to remove. You can just put a screwdriver in there, like so, and just tap it, get a hammer in there, just to get it started. And then, and then after you get to that point, then, then it'll just pry out. So not too much holding on that. And now we're at the point where you can actually see that bearing. We're going to have to remove this. And it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. All right, sports fans, my first attempt trying to take this bearing apart with a puller was a fail. It just, it just wasn't going to work. It's, I was basically pulling against myself here, and I just wasn't going to get anything done. That was just not the right way to do it. So, on my second attempt, originally, this hub and bearing, uh, this hub was in there like that, okay? And it went all the way through like that. And uh, this seal here, this race, this inner bearing race and this uh, bearing seal were in there like that, okay? So what I did is I put in a, a bolt this bearing. And what I did is I just, no, I couldn't film this out. Maybe I'll film it when I do the other side, but I just whacked the hell out of it. And uh, doing that did drive that uh, hub out. It destroys the bearing, but the bearing's bad anyway, okay? Um, now you see that that race is still on that bearing. And you can watch some other YouTube videos on how to get that uh, bearing race off by grinding a notch in it, kind of diagonally there, and then you take a chisel and crack it. I'm going to show you another way to do it. So, that's what we have here. So this bearing is, is damaged, but it was junk before. There was still some amount of grease in it, though. It, 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 isn't, it didn't go bad because it ran dry. It's still got grease in it. It just, uh, it just got old. All right, now let's see about what we can do about actually removing these bearing races from the steering knuckle and the hub. Now, there's plenty of videos out there on removing this inner bearing race. And it's actually probably not a bad way to do it. What they suggest is taking the grinder of your choice, okay, and grinding a diagonal notch in that bearing race, okay, right, like kind of like that, and then, but not being very careful not to hit the hub there or there, okay, and then you can take a chisel, a hammer and chisel, and just pound in that notch, and you should be able to crack that bearing race. Okay, now, I am doing this video primarily to see if there's another way to do this. Now what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and cut this off with an acetylene torch. Now, a lot of people might be kind of afraid to do this, but these hubs aren't really all that expensive if you screwed it up. And they aren't all that uncommon. They're easy to come by. They're not too expensive. So if you screwed it up, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Now, a lot of people are afraid to cut off a bearing race with a torch, but you don't attack this like you, like when you're cutting a piece of angle iron or something like that. Um, you just uh, get a little spot cherry hot, just like when you're starting a, a normal cut. But uh, then you just blip the oxygen a little bit. You don't try to make a whole cut. You flip the oxygen, burn away a little bit, and then start all over again. Make an area of cherry red and flip your oxygen. So it's a little bit easier than, than most people realize. And uh, it's almost a, 
mystical thing to some people. So if you can develop this skill, you will uh, you'll really be able to impress some of your friends. So, let's get our torch set up and rock and roll. It's not as hard as it looks because even though these pieces of metal are actually touching each other and with a very small tolerance too, the heat does not totally transfer to the uh, pump itself. So you can just kind of peck away at this race and uh, not uh, had to really worry too much about ruining your pub as long as you're careful. All right. Now, let's see what we got now. Now, I tried to cut as little as possible because I didn't want to cut into the uh, hub itself. So just like the uh, guys that use the uh, grinder, we will take a chisel Try to break it the rest of the way. Now she's starting to come. Just this a little bit. So get a new whacking angle. New whacking angle required. Pounding this with the chisel angled away, and uh, it's almost kind of like it's unscrewing off the hub. But now we got quite a bit of gap where we made that cut with the torch. So she's coming now, as far as One more time, and I think we got it.
You know, I suppose if you're really good with a torch and you had a lot of all, the smart thing would have been, once I got to this point, is to just take it and start torching on the other side. Um, it probably would have kind of just opened up and came off really easy. I was, I got to admit, I don't do this every day, so, you know, I was a little bit apprehensive about it, but let's take a look at our end result here. Now, what I did is I didn't go for making a perfectly clean cut there. My main concern was not hurting the, the hub shaft there. So I kind of nibbled away at that, okay? And if you can see there, I wonder if this will show up on the camera. The material is just about, it's still intact there. There's a crack there, but I just didn't want to burn away that uh, hub shaft, okay? Now, let's see how we did on the hub. If we did perfect, there won't be any nicks in this hub at all from the flame. So I'll wipe it off and we'll see, we'll see what we got here, huh? I don't know how well this is going to show up on camera. But it's got really small scratches in it. Okay, but no gouges, okay? Nothing where we can't just, just clean it up a little bit with some fine emery cloth. But uh, we, there's no cutting gouges. The torch did absolutely no damage at all to this hub. Okay, the only scratches are actually from when I was pounding the inner race off. And I think next time, I'm going to have enough, see, see there's some scratches there, but they aren't deep. They aren't deep at all. I can't catch a fingernail on them or anything, okay? I think the, other, the next time when I do the other side, I'll torch it on both sides because now i got a little more confidence. I, I haven't cut a bearing off a shaft in, oh, God, at least 10 years, okay? So I'm out of practice, so I don't think I did too bad for not having done this in a while. But I think this worked out pretty good. It's actually probably faster than using the grinder if you're competent with a torch. Uh, you can probably just torch each side. You know, if you know what you're doing, boom, 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 you're done. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm basically a, a novice at this, but uh, I think it worked out pretty good. Um, what you want to do, like I say, you don't want to try and cut it all at once if you're not experienced. You know, get, get an area red hot and then just blip that oxygen lever and it'll instantly burn some uh, material away. And you will notice that uh, if you're careful, you can get the race itself red hot without getting this... Uh, this uh, shaft surface here uh, red hot. So it's actually easier to cut bearings off of shafts than you, than you might think. I, I know a lot of people that have never done it and they hear about a guy doing it or watch a guy doing it, they just look at him in awe. But it's not really that tough. Now, let's see if we can get the inside, or rather that outside race of this bearing off. And that's gonna be coming out of that steering knuckle. Now here, the so the stakes are gonna be higher because the steering knuckle is all a little bit more expensive than a uh, than a uh, hub, so uh, you ruin that. Then you're then you're going to the junkyard because you're not going to want to buy one of them new.